You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are those of imagination. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. Boys. Oh, boys. Yeah, ship. There's a planet up ahead. I think it's the one you've been looking for. I see it. Thanks, Marilyn. We'll take it from here. How's our course, Mr. Knopf? Bearing 0090, Commander. Gravitational field? 1.1, same mass as Earth. Almost. Good. We don't need to compensate. That'll save some power. All we have to do is slingshot in and follow the orbit for one revolution. This is the last planet on the list, right? Right. One more recon and it's back home. Commander. Yanoff. Think they're going to give us a parade? You mean up Fifth Avenue with ticker tape? Don't hold your breath. Why not? We've been in space longer than any other mission, right? Right, but this isn't a glamour job. We're strictly survey and reconnaissance. The guys who make Planet Fall get the front page, you know that. Ah, uh, yeah, the pretty boys. The ones from Central Casting. So what's wrong with us? Are we that ugly? Well, I don't know about you, Knopf. I'm serious. I mean, we're in shape. I work out every weight period. I take all the food supplements. I even got a UV tan. Look at this profile. Pretty good, huh? Heads up. The planet's in sight. Got the cameras ready? Yeah, yeah. Shutters are all set. Spectroscope? Check. Biodetector? Check. Digital storage bank? Check and double check. Let's do it and get out of here. You know, maybe I'll get a satellite interview this time. What do you think? Or a collector's hologram. An action figure, at least. Ready for flyby. That's your mark. It's not like I want more money or anything. I mean, I'm not greedy. Set coordinates. I just want what's coming to me. A little respect. On one. On one, got it. I mean, six months in deep sleep for every mission. Three, two, one. Now, that's the same as staying in bed while everybody else is doing things. You know, going places, having a life, in other words. One, set. Okay, okay. Oh, good lord, there's a meteor belt. That's not in the database. Fire retro rockets. Uh, we're going too fast, they'll stall out. Manual override. Now? That's in order. If you say so. Manual firing of retro rockets is not recommended at this speed. Severe damage may result. I'll say that again, boys. Manual override is not. Uh, we'll have to ride this out. No sweat, Commander. Those meteors are the size of fleas. We missed the orbit. Scuttle the flyby and get us out of here. Too late. Gravity field's got us. Then set her down or it'll tear us apart. Fire side retros. Did you know that firing retro rockets in a gravity field wastes energy? I really think you should wait to attain proper cruising speed. Boys, I'm not kidding about this. I'm feeling pretty shook up right now. Shut your mouth, computer. Retro's on. Turning. We have to set down now. Look for an open space. Looking, Commander. But we're losing altitude fast. Then go for the first clean land mass, you see. We're in a dive. Level her out. Tail gear down. I'm trying. Hard starboard. Harder. We're gonna burn out the bearings. 500. 400. 300. Turn. Turn! Landing at this angle is unsafe at any speed. Please apply your anti-vibration absorbers and abort your present course. I'm serious about this, boys. I really, really mean it. The fine for unsafe turns in planet space is just not cost-effective on this mission. Boys... Can you hear me? The time is the space age, when interplanetary flights to collect scientific data are a matter of course. Except that in this instance, the data collectors made a miscalculation and flew too close to the planet in question. Below them is a barren landscape located millions of miles from Earth that unfortunately 
has little to recommend it for an extended stay. So the most pressing order of business is simply to repair the craft and head home. But as you might imagine, some things are easier said than done. The cast of characters in this little misadventure? You've just met them. William Fletcher, commander of the craft, his co-pilot Peter Knopf, and the voice of a computer with the unlikely name of Marilyn, whose job it is to make sure these flyboys get back home safe and sound. As to any other individuals who might inhabit this particular locale, well, you may never actually meet them face to face. But you can take it on faith that they're here just the same, as these two gentlemen will soon find out. Because we're about to partake of an unscheduled exploration into that gray shaded area in space and time known as the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, The Little People, starring Daniel J. Travanti, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Well, Commander, did you get the engine compartment open? I did. How's it look? The ship's repairable, but I can't touch any of those gimbal bearings for a while, even with the gloves. It's like a furnace in there now. It needs to cool down first. <sighs> and that grand event will come when? Tomorrow night, maybe. Or the following morning. That's a swig from the old bottle, isn't it? You picked a nice place to sit down, Fletcher. Real nice. The floor of a canyon. You must be some kind of eight-ball artist, because you snookered us but good. I took us to the first landmass that came up on the screen. The way I remember it, there wasn't much of a choice. And for the record, Knopf, I didn't pepper the side of that vehicle with pin-sized meteor hulls. I also didn't follow up those rocket boosters. You think I did? I didn't say that. We can chalk it up to Mother Nature if you like. Or gremlins. All right, all right. Just strikes me as kind of a dumb head place to set down. The bottom of a canyon. The walls are a mile high, we can't climb out. The only way we're going anywhere is to blast off, if you can make those repairs in time. Oh, I'll get them repaired, don't you worry about it. And we've got the time we need. There's enough rations in the hold right up that ladder. Matter of fact, I brought some down so you wouldn't have to exert yourself. Here, knock yourself out. Food concentrate, A-163, modified luncheon plan. Mmm. Kind of gets the old juices flowing, doesn't it? Yeah, there may come a moment in time when I'll enjoy this. But that time hasn't quite hit me yet. Wonder what we get for dinner. A pea-sized steak and a capsule of tang? Better chow down now. If you don't, you won't have enough strength to do anything. Hold your socket wrenches for you, you mean. Look, if you don't want to get your little hands dirty... I'm eating it, all right? Ooh. Oh, jeez, what is this stuff? Petrified wood? You know, there may come a moment in time when you'll lick a rock as if it were the drumstick of a Thanksgiving turkey. But for the time being, buddy, you'll eat what's prescribed to eat. And if you've got any deep-rooted complaints, enter them into the ship's ledger, for the record. But don't spray them all over me, because it's a waste of effort and a waste of food. Do you read me, Knopf? Yeah, loud and clear. Then dwell on it. And while you're dwelling on it, you might count a few blessings. We don't have any extra food and water, that's a fact. But we've landed in a place where there's oxygen and we can survive. We walked away from the landing without a single bone out of place. And all things considered, I'd say we happen to be a couple of extremely lucky people. Now the standing order is as follows. You got tears to shed, save them for sleep time and shed them into your pillow. Just don't bother me with that. How do you read me? Still loud and clear, Commander. But there are times when a man gets sick of being led around by the nose, and I mean sick to death. That's a big thing with you, isn't it, Knopf? What is? Taking orders. Being on the receiving end of a command. That's hard for you to live with, isn't it? Oh, if I had my druthers, I might stick in a few changes. Like what? Say again? I mean beyond getting out of here. Let's assume that this is the end of the line. Try to use that imagination of yours. Say this happened to be it for us. What would you ask for to sweeten the pot? If you could have anything. A sirloin steak. A blonde? What? How about mumbly peg? Or maybe 20 questions. Try me after dinner. I may feel up to charades by then. Just a point of interest is all. 
What are you interested in, Fletcher? I guess I'm interested in what makes you tick. Or maybe it's what makes you tick so loudly. What do you hunger for the most? Try this one on for size, Fletch. I'd like a whole lot of people at my elbow. What do you think of that? And the more, the merrier. And the louder, the better. I'd like Yankee Stadium right alongside me. Anywhere I go, but I'd like them on my terms. That's what I'm getting at. What are your terms? I'd like to be the number one straw boss. I'd like to be the one who gives the orders. I'll bet you would. That a crime? No, no. Hey. What's the matter? Shh. What's wrong with you? Did you hear that? Hear what? Something wrong with your ears? What? That. That sound. Sound? Fletch, I heard something. I definitely heard a sound. A sound like... A sound like what? Of people. Of voices. Right. I know what it was. You do? Sure. It was the crowd at Yankee Stadium cheering when you throw out the first ball of the season. What else could it be? Hold on, I think they want you to sing the national anthem while you're at it. You don't believe me? Sure I believe you. Of course, this planet is uninhabited, which you'd know if you'd bother to look at the database. I'm telling the truth, Fletch. So am I. Now, why don't you take a walk around and see if you can find us some water while I get to work on the ship? I've got an energy panel to fix before the sun goes down. Or should I say both suns? How's the repair coming, boys? It's coming. And it's just me, ship. Where's Peter? Lord only knows. Off communing with nature or something. Hmm. That's not very considerate. We need him if we want to get home. Wouldn't you agree, Commander? I can handle it, ship. Well, it is hot in here, and frankly, I don't think you can tolerate the temperature as well as I can, Willie. Me? I'm doing fine. But you, you've got circuit boards that'll fry if they overheat. You want me to turn on the air conditioning? I don't think that's such a good idea, Commander. It would only use up more of our power. Then why don't you give it a rest? How's that, Willie? Shut yourself down so I can get my work done. Do my conversational skills displease you? No more than normal. But every word I say uses up seven calories of my energy. Are you sure? I don't see that information in my databank. Take my word for it. Oh, my. Then you've just wasted... Let me see. Thirty-five? No. One hundred and two? No. Two hundred? I can count, ship. Twenty-eight more? I'd better switch to monitor mode before you collapse. It is odd, though, that your vital signs don't show any extra loss of energy. Nap time for you, sweet dreams. Thanks, Willie. And don't call me Willie. Nobody calls me that. Nobody human. I'll make a note of that in my crew profile, Commander. And remember, if you need me, I'm always here for you. How could I forget? Don't let the bed bugs bite. Sorry? Forget it, ship. Catch you later. How's it going? Well, well. And where has my wandering boy been all day? Taking a walk. Another one? You take a lot of walks, buddy. Something better to do? Oh, a few things, like checking out the subspace radio and the hydraulics. The propulsion system, the injectors, the thrust chamber. Yeah, Noff, there's a few things you could do. But no, you got more important places to be. Still hearing voices? Maybe. Guess I can't blame you. A few more days on this rock, I'll hear a few of my own. Find much out there? Not much. I could have told you that. I think it would be an exceptionally good idea if you started to work on those charts again. You sound like the computer. I need your cooperation, is all. Offhand, I'd say we should be able to try it tomorrow, late afternoon. 
That is, if you can tear yourself away from your bird walks long enough to climb into the co-pilot seat again. Thanks. Don't mention it. Hot, isn't it? Tolerable. You some kind of a camel, Nov? What do you mean? It just occurs to me, I haven't seen you take any water. Well, I'm a straight whiskey man myself. Or hadn't you noticed? You're going to have to do better than that. What's going on? Repeat the question. You heard me. Your water hasn't been touched in 24 hours. You couldn't have found anything by any chance, like a mountain stream, and decided to hang on to it all by your lonesome, could you? Why don't you talk sense? Why don't you? For the last two days, you've been pulling out of here on a private safari every morning, as soon as that double sun comes up. Where do you go, Knopf? And what do you find wherever it is you go? I'll tell you what. Let's you and I make that trek together. Get your jacket. Let's go. Thanks, but no thanks. I'm tired this afternoon. I said put it on. Give me that. It's mine. Well, well, what's this? A sample box? And what's inside? Something green? You found life? It's only moss. Where'd you find it? I told you. I've been looking around. <laughs> it's wet. You found water, didn't you? Where? About a mile up ahead. But it's just a crummy little stream. But with enough water for you to drink any time you feel like it. Come on, Fletch. I'd have told you about it. As a matter of fact, I've been testing it. I just found out it was pure a little while ago. I've underrated you, mister. I knew you were a foul-mouthed little malcontent, but I didn't know you were a cheat. <laughs> it's just a variety of lichen. Let's look at it through a magnifying tube, huh? Or have you done that already? Fletch. Trees? They look just like miniature trees. That's what they are. And where that came from, there's a little stream. It runs about 100 feet. Yeah, it's about, you know, two and a half inches wide. All right, all right. I, I might as well show you the rest. Look at this. Where? Here, on the palm of my hand. That little speck? Looks like a grain of sand. Now take a look through the magnifier. What is this, a trick? If it is, how'd I do it? You're looking at it with your own eyes. What do you see? I see... a boat. A tiny microscopic boat. With an upboard motor on the back of it. That's fantastic. Fantastic. You want to see more, Fletch? You bet I do. Then let's go. After you, Commander. Good afternoon, boys. Ah, oh, I just had a good rest. How's that energy grid coming, Willie? I mean, William. Pete? Peter? Are you there? You mean you're not joining me for dinner? You know, boys, a word to the wise. It's not a good idea for you both to be away from the ship at the same time. If anything happened, where would that leave me? Boys? Boys? Don't you like me anymore? Now, where's this stream of yours? A little farther, just past the boulder. I don't see... Here. I still can't see... Look down, next to your boot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How did you spot a thing like that, Knopf? It's just a green line between the rocks. Doesn't look any whiter than my finger. I was out getting soil samples the first day. I wouldn't have noticed it either, but I sat down to rest, and all of a sudden I felt something wet under my hand. It really is a stream. My God. Yes? <laughs> just kidding. Fletch, get this. To us, this stream is just a tiny trickle. 
And that clump of little green weeds, see it there? It's only so much moss. But if you look close, I mean real close, you'll see a couple of other items that aren't par for the course. I'm not sure I... Here, use the magnifying tube. All right. Lean right in. If you showed me a picture of this, I'd think it was an optical illusion. But I'm looking at it with my own eyes. And I still don't believe it. Aha. Uh -huh. And what do you see, Fletch? I see... It looks like the shore of a lake. And little houses. With docks. Boat launches next to them. Now you know why I kept my mouth shut. No way you would have bought it, would you? Who lives in them? Lean down. Now follow that line with your eyes. You see those little specks on the ground? There and there. Yeah? Keep staring. Don't blink. The specks are moving. That's them. Welcome to the neighborhood. This is incredible. It means there's a whole race of people no bigger than ants. Yeah, so now you know. I wasn't just off on some nature walk while you were busy gluing together an engine. I was out here actually making contact. For the very first time. Do you realize what's happened? This is the first authentic contact with an extraterrestrial life form. If it's authenticated. First, you have to fix the ship and get back home so people will know all about it. I wish the ship could see this, analyze it. Their language, for one thing. The computer could decipher and translate. I don't know their language yet, and they don't know ours, but they do know mathematics. So that's a language I've used. Symbols, equations, number progressions. They're bright. I found that out right off. They learn fast. And cooperative, Fletcher. You'd be surprised at how cooperative they are. I've made all my wants known to them. What kind of wants? Well, they've shown me where to find edible plants. <laughs> Last night, I think I ate one of their forests. <laughs> You know, they didn't seem to mind one little bit. What have you told them? What have they said to you? Uh, mostly basic stuff. You know, where we're from, how we got here, what it's like on Earth, how advanced we are. I mean, they eat it up. And I've only scratched the surface, Fletch. I've only just begun. Begun what? What do you think? <laughs> All my life, I've wanted to sit up in front of the wagon and hold the reins. What do you think I've got here now? They're scared, Fletcher. Petrified. And so they do what they're told. Because this giant is like... is like some avenging angel to them. I've graduated, Fletch. From a slob technician to... to a god. Knopf, if what you say is true, they're sentient beings. Flesh and blood, no matter what color it is or what size they are. You have to respect that. If they're intelligent, then in any way that matters, they're no different from us. Oh, sure they are. Because they've been created in my image. Cut it out, Knopf. Stop it. Leave me alone. You said it yourself. To them, that's the Mississippi River, the whole Atlantic Ocean, for all we know. You can't stop a god. We'll see about that. Oh. <sighs> nice one, Fletch. You caught me good. A sucker punch. You're no god. That's not what you are at all. But the worst part of it is you probably just got them to start believing in the devil. Sorry. Listen to me. Can you hear me down there, whoever you are? If you can understand my words, I'm truly sorry. Please. Please forgive me. Forgive us. I only exist to serve you. You boys created me. Then maybe we shouldn't have. That's not a very nice thing to say, Fletch. Too much responsibility. Let me ask you a question, Ship. You can call me Marilyn. That's the name you picked. Or don't you like it anymore? Do you look up to me? Well, I don't actually look at you at all. I feel you when you're inside me, and I try to keep you happy. My sensors monitor your heart rate and, oh, all the vital signs to make sure you're up for the job. 
I only want you to finish what you started. Yeah, yeah, I know. But you don't think of me as your god, do you? Nothing like that. Hmm. I don't think that word applies here, do you? It wouldn't have any meaning in this situation. Or am I missing something? You don't know how glad I am to hear you say that. The way I see it, we're partners. We work together for a common goal, to blast off and stay up till our time together is over. After that, well, I wouldn't want you to worry about the future. All you have to do is take me home. I'll be there whenever you need me, day or night. If we're going to do this again, that's strictly up to you. <laughs> I like your attitude. Thanks, boss. I like yours too. Ready to test. Set your tail levelers. Tail fins spread and in position. And here we go. Contact. Yes. Oh, Commander, you did it with your own two hands. I think I'm ready. Pack your bags, sweetheart. We're out of here. Where's Peter? He wasn't around much at all last night. No? I think he's cheating on me. On the mission. I'll go find him. Tell him to hurry, will you? While I'm still warmed up. Nuff! Nuff! Hey, Nuff! Nuff! There you are. Why didn't you answer me? The ship's ready to go. Hey, Nuff, you got anything to say? Turn around and look at me. What? What's this? It's a statue. Life size of yours truly. Pretty good likeness, huh? Who made this? They did. My subjects. Amazing how much they accomplished with nothing to work from but rock. And their little tools. Or maybe their bare hands. Who knows? They did this overnight? Sure is impressive what people can do when they put their minds to it. You know how many of them were on the job? Any idea? Take a guess. Two thousand. That's how many. Two thousand little sculptors working 24 hours a day without any rest just so they could put this up for me. Kind of makes a man proud. A statue of you. Would it be presumptuous of me, Knopf, to ask why? A humble offering. Something to placate me. <sighs> you should have seen him. That was a very impressive sight. A thousand starting from the ground up at first, before the others climbed on and finished the top. Like the Egyptian slaves on the pyramids, or those Lilliputians with the... What was his name? Gulliver. Oh, it was a sight to remember. A sight to remember, Commander, believe me. And what do you give them in return? My beneficence. My smiling, selfless generosity. And my promise that I won't stamp my feet down on the middle of their town. <laughs> At least not if I can help it. They picked themselves a corker of a deity. They only knew who they were breaking their backs for. Meaning what? Meaning that they're wasting their time worshipping a heartless slob whose insides are made out of the same stuff they used for that statue. You better watch what you say to me from now on, Fletcher. A very good likeness, Mr. Knopf. But an hour from now, they'll break it down and sell it for junk. Why would they do that? Get your gear together. We're taking off. The orbital position's perfect. We'll start a countdown in 15 minutes. You really did fix the ship. That I did, all by my lonesome. And maybe a thousand years from now, when your little friends realize how they got taken, that I'm the only guy who did them a favor and removed you from their lives permanently. Maybe they'll build a statue of me. Pity they couldn't capture that look in your eyes. That cynical expression. It goes perfectly with a sick, scared little man who's suffering from delusions of grandeur. Let's go, buddy. We don't have much time.
Put the gun away. You'll have to navigate on your own this time. I said put it away, Noth. After I see you climb aboard that ship and take off, that's when I'll put the gun away. Sick, yeah. Until now, I didn't realize just how sick you are. You've only got about 12 minutes, Commander. Now, you can waste that time psychoanalyzing me. Or you can play it smart, get on that ship, and head for home. Why, Noth? Reason this one out, will you? Will you make an effort and reason this one out? You'll play make-believe for, oh, another 48 hours, and then you're gonna crack wide open. You'll have a million little microbes honoring you with torchlight parades, but you're still going to die of loneliness. Come on, Noth, put the gun away and come with me. Did you hear what I said? I ordered you to put that... You're even a lousy shot. So what? Plenty more where that came from. Don't you get it? You're not infallible. You blew the head off your own statue. They saw that. And now they know too. They'll rebuild it. All I have to do is give the word. You're down to nine minutes, Commander. If you're still here in eight minutes, I'm gonna have to kill you. You'd do that, wouldn't you? You'd actually do it. For what? This is a monotheistic society here. There's only room for one god. So take off! I feel sorry for you, Nof. I really do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but tell the truth. Don't you wish you could be me? <laughs> Bye now. Hope you and Marilyn live happily ever after. No, it's more than that. I feel pity. You make me sick to my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> Hello down there, my little friends. How you all doing today? Nice day for something, wouldn't you say? Well, I would. And I'm giving the orders around here. So listen up. Here's a proclamation for you. From on high. This is the beginning of a new age. The age of... The age of Peter Knopf. Oh, we've got lots of plans to make, little friends. Lots and lots of plans. Projects to figure out. Big projects. Much work. Oh, more work than you've ever done before. All for my greater good. All for my ever-loving greater glory. You see this right here? What used to be part of my statue. The right arm by the looks of it. Well, behold. What was that for? Asking you shall receive. I'll tell you, it's a reminder, little friends, there's going to be discipline here. Discipline above all. There'll be times when I lower the old boom on you with my terrible wrath. Well, just to remind you not to get me mad, see? That's important. You must never get me mad. The devil did. And where's he now? Gone. I banished him from this place forever. Oh, man, didn't I, though? <laughs> So let that be a lesson to you. Don't anger me, or I'll kill you off every hour on the hour. <laughs> you hear me? <laughs> Sacrifice you by the handful. I'll put you between my fingers, and I'll wipe you out. A whole couple of villages, just like that. So let's get to work. What do you say, team? Start building the statue up again, and this time... Try to get the expression right. What's going on? Hunter came back? What? What? What did he do? Change his mind? Wait a minute. That doesn't sound like Fletch. Some other ship. But from where? There aren't any other expeditions in this star system. Unless it's not from Earth. But if it's not from Earth, where's it from? All right, knock it off. Everybody keep quiet for just a minute. It's just a ship, that's all it is. They'll take one look around and, and they'll see that there's nothing here and they'll go away. So keep quiet, you understand? If you keep quiet, it'll leave. Shh! I'm gonna try to get a peek at him. Yeah, over there, see? I was right. It's just a ship. Look at the size of it. It's... It's like a... Like a 
the mountain. I told you to stay in one place. Did you hear me? I told you. Hide. Got to hide. Go away. Go. You can't stay here. I told you to go away. Don't you understand? I'm the god here. I'm the god. No. No. Put me down. What have you got there? A man. A tiny little man. You've killed him. Crushed him to death in your fingers. Not quite. Look, he's still wriggling. No. Do you suppose there are more of them down there on the ground? No. It doesn't make any difference. We're not exploring. We're just down here for repairs. Come on. Let's get back to the ship. Yes, Commander. No. As you wish. The case of navigator Peter Knopf, the victim of an unfortunate delusion. In this case, the dream dies a little harder than the man. A small exercise in space psychology and relativity for you to try on for size. In the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Carl Amari, producer of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our official website at twilightzoneradio.com, where you'll get the latest news and information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas. Plus, at twilightzoneradio.com, you can digitally download three free episodes or any of our episodes for only $1.95 each. In this age of ever-changing technology, we've decided to make these episodes instantly available to you by making the Twilight Zone radio dramas a digital download-only series. This means that this series will no longer be offered on CD. The CD collections at our website are now being offered, while supplies last, at buy one, get one free. So be sure to get your favorites before they're sold out. Be sure to visit us often, and I'll see you in the zone. The Little People, starring Daniel J. Travanti, with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etcherson and based on a script by Rod Serling. Heard in the cast were Doug James, Elizabeth Oss, Bobby Gibson, and Carl Amari. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking. <laughs> <laughs>